Welcome to Hard Talk. I'm Zainab Badawi. It's nearly a year since a new pope was installed, but still the same problems dog the Catholic Church. A UN committee on the rights of the child has just criticised the Vatican over its failure to deal decisively with child sexual abuse by priests. Gay rights activists still attack the church on its stand on homosexuality, and the Vatican's finances have been under scrutiny and criminal investigation. Last year, Cardinal Peter Turkson from Ghana was tipped to become the first black pope, and at 65, he is young enough still to achieve that in the future. He's calling for financial reforms and action against poverty and inequality. But does the Catholic Church have the moral authority to take a lead on such issues? Cardinal Peter Turkson, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. Why do you say that the financial crisis was partly the result of moral failings? Uh, because ultimately, ultimately behind all financial transactions and uh, when people have to deal with financial instruments, it all takes a certain amount of moral decision. It involves decision making and every decision making is like an, an expression of morality. And that's why, that's why we can extend an ethical consideration to everything that happened with the financial crisis. You're, you are advocating reform in the international financial system by creating a kind of global public authority and a global bank that would consider in particular the interests of the developing countries. You feel that would be a good way to go essentially, forward? Essentially, essentially the poor. <clears throat> and the, the poor may well be found in developing countries, but they can also be found even within the devolved countries, but it's basically to, to, to have uh, the financial systems that we have, think about the marginalized, think about those who get missed out in all of these operations. So essentially it's something that we, can, we tend now to you know, refer to as an inclusive system of economics, an inclusive system of financing, so that everybody kind of gets considered in this. That's very much the tone, isn't it, now, mm -hmm. that's been set by Pope Francis. He yeah. is a very modest man, likes to use public transport, won't live in great <laughs> splendour in the papal residence, but in the yeah. guest house, that kind of thing. I mean, and, and he, at the end of last year, in an exhortation, <clears throat> said, not to share one's wealth with the poor is to steal from them and take away their livelihood. It is not our own goods which we hold, but theirs. It sounds like Marxist doctrine, you know, common no, ownership quite, of common not goods. Not quite, not quite, because, you know, the church's social doctrine, which provides a guidance, okay, uh, for all of these uh, operations and systems, uh, basically ha are, uh, you know, are based on a couple of principles, four essentially. Apart from, you know, the affirmation of the dignity of every human person, which needs to be, you know, respected, there is a thing about the common good. Okay, of, of people, and that just means that we should be concerned about the well-being and the flourishing of all of us. Benny Gas Lynch, Professor of Economics in okay. the University of Buenos Aires in Argentina, of course the Pope is from Argentina, mm -hmm. uh, says, is this an invitation to confiscate the Vatican's riches, or is the Pope referring only to the riches of those who are outside the walls of the Vatican? Fine, and uh, you know, if you if have the Vatican to, if is you, rich, isn't it? No, no, but again, that's the point again. What, is, what, what does it mean the Vatican is rich? Are, are you talking the, about the work of art displayed in the Vatican Museum? Or are, are, you, are you talking about the wealth of individual dioceses spread around the world? What does the wealth of the Vatican refer to? Well, you made, for instance, in the Vatican, I think it was something like nearly 90 million euros profit in 2012, for instance. Based that's on? a lot of money. Well, on the, the contributions that you get from people and okay, wealthy so that's Catholics it. and so, that so kind of thing. So that's it. If, 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 if you make wealth based but on contributions... The grandeur of the Catholic Church, <laughs> as you said, those paintings and the fact that, um, yeah. I mean, the Pope is effectively a head of state. So, I mean, when uh, somebody like that professor makes that point, it kind of slightly jars, no, doesn't it? No, because probably what the professor is overlooking is the fact that the Vatican as a head of, this, of the Catholic Church supports, supports over 500,000 local churches around the world. Churches not like, you know, the Church of London or the Church of New York. Churches which, where even the pastors and the priests who serve the church 
need to be supported before they okay. can. You know. It is generally accepted, of course, yeah. that a lot of the aid distributed around the world is through the offices of Catholic even, agencies. Even the setup of churches Fair themselves. You know? You're not exactly a byword for fiscal prudence, are you, at the Vatican? Sure. Yeah. Uh, what you, is you've it? You've had your problems there. I mean, when Moneyval, which is the, um, the the body of the Europe, the Council sure. of Europe, which monitors um, money laundering, terrorist funding, that kind of thing, it gave the Vatican a mixed report, it welcomed its efforts to clean up its institutions, but it expressed surprise that Vatican regulators had not carried out more inspections of the Vatican Bank. Uh, there is a former Vatican Bank official under investigation in Italy, possibly because some Italian businessmen may have used the Vatican Bank as a kind of tax haven or a fiscal paradise. Definitely, this is, this is, this is something, no, sure. no, this is something that we just need to uh, recognise. The Vatican Bank, okay, referred to as a bank, some would rather refer to it as a financial institution of some sort. But uh, its 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 presence in Italy, uh, and the fact that it did whatever it did, probably was also tempting for so very many people who wanted to escape, you know, the normal taxations of you know other banks, and so made use of. Uh, of you know of of personnel but it within doesn't the look bank. good does it i mean even pope francis himself says i don't know how the scandal at the vatican bank sure, I mean, is it's going a, to a, end a, no it, it can't end it's it it can't end it and it can end by for example if if if, if the vatican bank has a mixed staff staff from different parts of the world and if his staff is not predominantly italian or you know some local group if you have a mix of staff, you know, who dispose of expertise to do that, I think that can be dealt with. But you accept you know? that there is a problem and that when you go about and, and talk about... I mean, certainly this is, this, for, is, this is the first thing for anybody. Crisis, there's been a problem that people sort of sure. look over your shoulder and they think, hmm, definitely. I mean, I mean, definitely there will be no, there's no denying the fact that an institution this old, having had structures this old, you know, uh, ha, ha, you know they've gathered moss. Okay, in its passage through history, I mean, it's just fair enough to recognize that. And it's not, and just as we have, you know, in the history of the church, we are very familiar with abuses and individuals rising up and challenging the church to, you know, uh, to clean uh, up certain things. Whether you take it in the form of saints who come and ask the church for reforms and all of that, so we know about this. Mm. We know that you know the church so every it now needs and then. So to be cleaned up. You accept I it mean, needs to be cleaned up. There's no human institution which is without well, sin or failures, you know. Just looking at you personally, would it be fair to say that you are liberal on social and economic justice, as you've been outlining, but fairly orthodox on social matters like homosexuality, for instance? Uh, again, again, we're using vocabularies which have attained meanings in different, I mean, liberal. Uh, in but, what okay. sense would you consider me liberal? But you just, you think, just asked you know, for an what? equitable distribution of, of, of wealth and that kind of thing. But just looking at social no, no, matters... That, that, that would not be liberal. Okay. That would just be being responsive Fair. to the social concerns of the church. All right. What about being responsive to the concerns of people who have the kind of sexuality that the church doesn't particularly condone? And I'm thinking in particular here of homosexuals. Yeah. When Uganda, for instance, was recently discussing its anti-gay bill, you said last year the intensity of the reaction about gay matters is probably commensurate with tradition. What do you yeah. mean by that? I mean, in, trad in several traditional societies in Africa, the thing about same-sex you know, relations was something which we are not reckoned with. And in fact, several places they were considered taboos and, you know, and things that were not tolerated you know, in society. That's, that's just what it means. And this is still there. I mean, it's not only Uganda. No, I know. Nigeria, it's Nigeria, Nigeria. Nigeria also just legislated Absolutely. against this. So this is a reflection of this traditional you know, sense that I, you know, I, was, you know, so I was talking you, about. So you say, let's understand that. So the tormenting, the persecuting, imprisoning, even killing of gay people in some countries in Africa and elsewhere, which is going on, you say, let us understand that because it no, may no, be embedded no. okay, in cultural now again, tradition. Again, it's shifting again. No, but I'm just asking when, when, you. When, when somebody comes asking for why a group of people act in a special way, it would be fair to have people understand the anthropologists and everything on the line that. That's, you know, having people understand that, it's not the same as saying that therefore it's justifiable or whatever, you know, whatever but is being done. But how can you now. try to understand the persecution of gay people in some countries in Africa? What is there I to mean, understand? That's surely sure, wrong. Sure, sure, there is. I mean, if, 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 if a local, if, if, if a group of people, a society, you know, uh, uh, you know places such a high premium, on, on child birth as a source of, you know, increase of its local population. And basically because in those, you know, a, a, a local society that suffers so much, you know, 
child, you know, mortality, infant, infant mortality and all of that. For a community like that, you know, increasing its membership is very crucial. Sure. But I mean, when therefore, you know, when they're there for any lifestyle comes, you know. But, you know, let's just But, you know, there are other traditions, Cardinal. I mean, female genital mutilation sure. prevalent in Africa. Deeply embedded in cultural traditions in Definitely, Africa. But the are you going to say, that, no, let no. us understand that? No. Are you? Are you? See, people go to universities. Are you, are you going to say, let us understand FGM? What gives rise to it? What, what, what is necessary to understand? I mean, there's no, there's no way anybody can meaningfully understand any feature of the world these days without having a certain amount of historical understanding. That historical understanding leads you to consider the situation but now, it, and, then, and then only then can you then say, in the light of what we know, in the light of present development, are we still going to go on doing things this way? That's where you make but the decision But it sounds like now. you're trying to explain and to some extent excuse no, such practices explana explanation which are is not, in Explanation tradition. is not the same as justification. You know, there is a difference in that. Okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, when, for example, I mean, we're talking about this. Let's introduce the factor of the slave trade. It's also something that happened. At that point, at that time in history, people found reason to do that. And when we're talking about, we need to understand yeah, that. We condemn, history. we condemn it. We condemn yeah, you it. Condemn you're it not only condemning. from this time. You're not condemning. For example, you've also said Africa's hostility to homosexuality will protect it from sex abuse, the kind of child sexual abuse we've seen in again, the Catholic Church again. in the West. But, I mean, again, you've been criticised for saying that, Cardinal, because you're conflating two things. Homosexuality I... is quite different from child sexual abuse. It is not conflicting. It's, 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 it's people moving between, you know, argue, uh, you know, lines of argument and thinking, which sometimes, you know, brings this up. I mean, all of this started when a gentleman came to me asking about this, and I said, you know, this is the situation. The rights of these people need to be safeguarded and respected. But if, you know, the question is about why then do we have certain African con communities or society we do this, this is a traditional viewpoint. And saying that this is a traditional viewpoint does not mean that, therefore, let us hang on to the traditional viewpoint. I mean, it's, a, it's, 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 it's useful but, for an outsider to understand why but, people can have but that. But you must regret, we knew, we you must regret conflating the two. Let me tell you, Kieran Connery, who's an English Catholic bishop of Arundel and Brighton, said homosexuality is irrelevant to the child abuse problem. We have been very careful to keep the two issues well apart. Definitely. You accept that? I said that. You do? Yeah. All right. Talking about child sexual abuse, of course, we've just had the publication, uh, the report by the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child, which Definitely. has been yeah. interrogating Vatican officials about child sexual abuse, mm -hmm. which, of course, has been a huge scandal overshadowing the Catholic Church. Just take one example of what the report says. It says it wants the Vatican to open its files on the kind of child sexual abuse that has gone on. Why won't the Vatican do that? Why would the Vatican... Why, why won't it open its files and reveal its files, be more transparent about the child sexual abuse cases that have gone on over decades? If, 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 if the Vatican, I mean, we may not readily conclude that the Vatican keeps fires about church and sex abuse uh, around the world. The Vatican has duly recognized the need, okay, for help for all the, the victims. The Vatican readily and consented to sign on to this convention, which I, you know, brought it to Geneva for this question and all of that. The Vatican has shown all interest to cooperate with, you know, with whatever international organizations are set up. To, with, with view to helping victims of, uh, of sex abuse. Now, if there are files on any of these, they are to be found in dioceses. That's where these perpetrators or these victims are to be found. They are in dioceses, and if you're looking for files on any of these, mm. you go to a local diocese. But the Vatican can say to its diocese, look, we want to see the files, because one question, OK, that people want an answer for is, yeah. does the church report, report abuses by priests or potential abuses to the secular law enforcement authorities in the countries. Definitely, that's, a, that's what the Vatican is now saying. But that's not what the report says. The report says that sometimes we've seen evidence of a parish priest committing child sexual abuse and then just being moved on to another parish this somewhere else, again, even uh, to another country. I think, I, think, I think when we get to talking about it, a certain amount of understanding needs to be, you know, the Vatican right now, right now, with the understanding that it has of this problem, has agreed to cooperate with any uh, you know, world body set up for this. It has advised bishops 
okay, to recognize that the civil authorities of the, uh, wherever the priests live are completely responsible and in charge of this. And any, any perpetrator or any, or any body who abuses uh, you know, a child or anybody has to you know, uh, face the laws of the state or whatever, whatever he is that this arguments are done. are not convincing because this report has just been issued and it says that the church has implemented policies that have led to the continuation of the abuse and the impunity what are of the, the policies? perpetrators. What are, what are They've the investigated policies? I, this. I, you know, like, what are the policies? You know, I mean, the like church the has implemented... Of, of priests yes, that's, so that's parish, the, for example. Now, for example, we, again, this is the thing that I go back to, you know, refer to certain history and you say, you know, it's, it's not quite, but this is the case. You know, you would, you know, the reporters, those who made the report, and probably you yourself would, uh, would, uh, would uh, you know, would understand that, certainly with, with, the, with, the, with the passage of time, our understanding of this phenomenon has, has, has increased and changed. There was a time that when bishops got cases of, uh, uh, you know, a priest or whatever being abusive of a child, they thought that it could be dealt with by the second, say, taking the person to an institution for a treatment center. Okay, based on the, the understanding of this issue at that time, they thought that the issue could be dealt with and taken care of by sending, a, you know, a priest or okay. whoever is found to That's be there. That's how they did a it. Treatment. So That's what do you do now? It. Do you remove now the priests from their posts in the church? No, now do that... Do you remove no, them? No, no, now that the understanding about this situation is improved, and it's round recognized that a simple passage in a treatment center doesn't quite deal with the issue. Sure. The understanding of bishops about this issue has changed. So what and now do you do? The bishops do not simply transfer priests. Do you remove the priests from their posts in the church, which is what the committee they will be, recommends they will not, you do? They will not be they appointed not to that. parishes. But will they be removed from their posts in mean, the church? Removing mean, the post means that they be, uh, uh, you know, like uh, be lay sized. Yes, That's will what they it be means. removed from their posts? A, then, when that happens, a bishop always has a due process to go through. And going through that due process, if at the end of that, the decision and the feeling is that the priest should be laicized, he will be laicized. But at the same time, I think, you know, in all fairness, the bishop also would want to try to help the priest himself. Do you, do you think, categorically now, all the criticisms you've had from victim supports group, somebody like Barbara Doris, director of Survivors Network of those abused mm -hmm. by priests, told the BBC, we must insist on tangible action that helps vulnerable children protect their bodies, not old, vague pledges that help a widely discredited institution protect its reputation, is what she said. Can I ask you, Cardinal, categorically, yes. is the church ready at last once and for all to take steps to ensure that never again will a child be abused by a member of the Catholic clergy and if they are, the answer, will you take the, the, decisive the, 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 action? The, the answer is yes and the Vatican has de demonstrated this clearly now. It was not obliged to sign on to this convention. It accepted to do it. It was not obliged to, you know, subject to it's accepted. So the Vatican has made it abundantly clear that you know, they said the protection of children, whatever, is of its you know, office top, uh, whatever. It set up a commission in the Vatican, headed by the Cardinal of uh, uh, Archbishop of Boston, Sean O'Malley, uh, a commission to follow up on this and ensure that this is taken care of, you know, in a due with regard to all the setup and the due legal structures that exist in countries. Will so, you have members of civil society and victim support group on this panel that's looking into child abuse? Sure, there are experts, and so the experts on that. So, but do you accept also that? Critics have said this whole issue of sexuality, the church's stand on homosexuality, the child sexual abuse situation has, also, has overshadowed the good work that the Catholic Church does all over the world. Do you accept that? It has, it has, and probably, now, again, this, this is a very snaggy thing. Has it term. overshadowed? With due, with due respect for the victims of the abuse who you know, need to be helped in all, you know, in all senses and all cases, the, the, you know, answering that they didn't is overshadowed all the good. That, that certainly has been the case. That's certainly been the case that, you know, the good works that's, uh, you know, of the church have been overshadowed, you know, infinitesimally by, by this church. That's, that's, that's true. That's true. But I mean, saying that is still not be, it's because the church attaches so great importance to the well-being of the victims and would wish to do everything to help them. Okay, but definitely its good works do not need to be, you know, 
It's not, you know, okay. it's like the proverb you have. You don't throw the data learning and the, you know, the data water, the, you know, all so, out at the same time. So, Cardinal, talking about good work and moving on to a different issue, the kind of good work that the church should be engaged in, interfaith dialogue right. is a very important aspect mm -hmm. of the work of senior Vatican officials such as yourself. You haven't exactly contributed very much to this, have you? In fact, arguably, you've operated to the detriment of good interfaith dialogue between Muslims and Christians. No, it's not true. It's not true. When I was in Ghana before I came to the Vatican, I was the president of the World Conference of Religions for Peace. My vice president was the Ahmadiyya, the head of the Ahmadiyya movement, Wahab Adams, who uh, may well even be in London at this time or the, on, the, on the conference. And uh, then subsequently, I was the head okay. of the president of but, also of a peace council, whose vice president was a Muslim. Oh, I have but can always... I explain why I put that point to you? Because, of course, in 2012 at the Bishops' Conference, you showed a YouTube video yeah. called Muslim Demographics. And it was very, very alarmist. For example, this video said, by 2050, France is going to be an Islamic republic. Mm -hmm. And there are those of you let who said explain. that let your me, numbers were wrong. Let me yeah. explain. You, let, but let, let, but let you me were criticised for trying certainly, to kind... Yeah. Certainly, because, one, that uh, tube, that uh, video clip was sent to me by another bishop. The title of the video clip in the mail did not say Muslim demographics. The title of the video clip that was sent to me was Demographic Problems, okay? So it was as such that I was using that thing to demonstrate uh, demographic problems in Europe. And demographic problem in Europe alarmist. in that sense. You're it's being not, alarmist. It's, it's, you were saying there are going to be more Muslims than this Christians is, this, and this Catholics is, this, in this, the future. This, 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 this is what, this, this, this what I'm, try, I'm trying to say. For me, it was a demonstration of the low fertility rate, the low birth rate, and the low type of thing. And their concern was really that. If the, a population, the contraceptive no, culture of Western no, Europe compared to Muslims breeding that, in no, greater no, numbers, that wasn't that's the alarmist. Point. That wasn't the point. The point okay. was that when a population, when a local population drops beyond a certain level, it will mean that any newcomer, any newcomer into that society will not be well right. received. We, we, so it was actually, it was actually to ensure that the birth rate in Europe does not lead to a certain right. amount of xenophobic, you know, any... any but if people question the expert advice, how can you at the Bishop's Conference just show this kind of YouTube? You're a senior cardinal, you're president of the Council of Justice and Peace in the Vatican. You should have access to better advice than that. It okay. certainly, certainly, certainly right. is the case. Certainly is the case. Just that I trusted another bishop who sent me that. And he sent me that, as I've tried to say. Oh, right. okay. It was not on that it. Islam. It you should have checked it. I should, I should have checked okay. that source. All but right. trusting another bishop sent me something without a title. All right. Next Muslim time you'll check it. Briefly and finally. It Cardinal. just probably means that every mail that comes from anybody. You're going to have to be careful in the nah, future. Yeah, sure. All right. But it just, it just <laughs> means that. But how can you go out okay. with this world without trusting people? Briefly yeah? and finally, Cardinal, sure. do you think these kind of controversies we've been discussing involving you have dented your chances of ever becoming the first black pope? <laughs> I, 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 this, this has never been, uh, you know, my, 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 my vision or, or, or desire or anything, you know, uh, with wanting to become anything in the church, but to just be of service to God's people. So, uh, you know, for me, it's not a question of a chance for this and a chance for that, a chance for that. That's, that's, that's not of a concern to me. Cardinal Peter Turkson, thank you very much indeed Thanks. for coming on Hard Talk. <laughs>